Hello and welcome. In this video, we will take a look at how to set up this motion warping wall tower functionality. As you guys can now see, my character properly detects the height of the object and the depth of the object and also the landing spot. So we will feed these three inputs to our motion warping component and the result will be the perfect wall tower animation and the height of the object is properly functional and my character properly wall tower any size or any kind of obstacle as you guys can now see so let's get started guys so here i have created a simple level and set up the character locomotion the simple character locomotion setup and the first thing you need to do is go to edit plugins and enable the motion warping plugin i have already enabled the plugin so now i'm gonna go to my content browser here you guys can now see my animation blueprint this is simple walking locomotion setup that i have made and here is my vault over test animation and the motion warping functionality is only working if your animation has proper in a as proper root motion for example here you guys can now see if I disable the root motion my character properly you guys can now see my character has proper root motion so the motion warping component only works for root motion animations I'm gonna enable my root motion animation and now I'm gonna right click on my vault over animation and create animation montage. Open it up. And now I'm gonna go to my notifies track. Add a notify track. And in my first track, I'm gonna right click and add notify state. I'm gonna add a motion warping notify state. So if I hit shift key and then drag my notify, my animation is also playing by adjusting the notify and now I'm gonna again hit right click on my second tab on my second notify tab and add notify for my motion warping so I'm gonna need to add three notifies for my motion warping the first will be my starting the second will be the looping and the third will be my landing so I'm gonna start my motion warping first component from over here to something here and for my looping part I'm gonna Set the start time from over here to here. So this is my rough timelines. You can set this up according to your need. And the landing will be the landing will be start from here to here so we change this setup after we have set up the functionality so I'm gonna click my first motion warping track go to details and
and over in my root motion modify configuration I'm gonna set this to simple wrap drop down and the you need to set up the proper name for my sync points so I'm gonna call the first one to start start motion wrap and the I'm gonna set the wrap translation to true and also wrap rotation and ignore the axis to false now I'm gonna go to my second notify set this to simple wrap set the sync point name to loop motion wrap and for looping I'm gonna wrap the translation and wrap the rotation to false and for my third notify I'm gonna set this to simple wrap and I'm gonna call this landing motion wrap and for my third I'm gonna set the only translation and disable other two so here is my animation montage is properly set up so you need to set up these three motion mapping notifiers and also set up the proper names in the details panel and set up the wrap set up the settings for your motion warping component so now I'm gonna go to my characters motion test character here is my simple third person character I'm gonna first add space bar so if I hit space bar I'm gonna grab my mesh and play montage the montage will be my wall tower test montage like so so for the animation blueprint I'm gonna go to animation blueprint and add a default slot default store for playing my animation montage and now if I hit spacebar you guys can now see my character properly plays the animation plays the animation montage so now we need to set up the motion warping component for feeding the start point the landing point and also the depth of the obstacle so that our character can properly uh, properly vault over the obstacle so now I'm gonna go to my character blueprint and disconnect my play montage and first set up the traces for our for detecting the positions for our montage so I'm gonna first use a sphere trace by channel connect this up over here I'm gonna use the for loop set this to 0 to 4 get my actor location add the multiply my to something like 30 
and I'm gonna break my vector and add this in my Z component. So now if I set this to in my start position, you guys can now see if I set this to radius to 5 and set this to for duration. 5 traces are spawned and now I'm gonna go to my character blueprint and set up the ending and location for my end location I'm gonna use get actor rotation forward vector multiply the forward vector with my float so this will be the length of how much how many units you want your traces to end I'm gonna add this to my start location. So here is my sphere traces. If I hit now play, you guys can now see the traces properly detects any kind of obstacle. You can change the settings according to your need. For example, you can set the, you can change this to something like three traces or four or five, and also the height of each trace. For example, if I set this to 20, you can now see the traces are more Now I'm gonna set this to 30 again. So if I hit something, I'm gonna break the hit result. So instead of using for loop, we need to use, set, use the for loop with break so if we hit something then we break the loop and then test the further result set this to 4 I'm gonna create a custom event for breaking my loop break first loop connect it over here so if the trace is hit something then we first break first loop if I hit play you guys can now see if I hit something then the remaining traces are not working So this will be useful if your obstacle is something like this and you want to cross that kind of obstacle this will this functionality is useful for that purpose for example you guys can now see my first trace is not hitting something and my second trace is properly hitting something so for this purpose i'm going to use this kind of this approach and now I'm gonna use my second for loop with break and for my second for loop with break I'm gonna use also sphere trace by channel again the radius will be my 6 and the start and end position will be the this loop will find the depth of the 
obstacle so for this I'm gonna grab my hit location add 90 units or something like 100 I'm gonna use 90 units in my Z axis and this loop I'm gonna set this to 0 to 5 and multiply the index value with my float to 50 multiply the index value to 50 and I'm gonna add node use add node use my get actor rotation forward vector and multiply the forward vector with my multiply the forward vector with float multiply the forward vector with 50 units occur with my index value and add this in my hit location this will be my start and for the ending I'm gonna subtract 100 units in Z axis so now if I hit play you guys can now see this functionality so this these are the traces that we have set up over here this will find the depth of the object you can set this according to your need for example if I set this to 4 then my character only detects the length of the obstacle something like this so I'm gonna set this to 5 and if the i'm gonna use a branch over here break my hit result and for my true case i'm gonna use a sequence node and grab my index value so if the index value is double equals to zero which means our first trace so the first trace will be the starting point so if this is our first trace I'm gonna branch this out and grab my hit location and promote this to a variable so this will be my So this will be my sync location sync point one or I'm gonna call this start sync point set it over here. So if I draw debug a sphere with this location 20 radius so here is my first location that the that I'm gonna feed this to my motion warping component this is the first location so the first location is properly set up now I'm gonna 
I'm gonna use the second sequence pin. I'm gonna duplicate this start sync point. I'm gonna call this depth sync point and set it over here. So if the hit if we hit something then the sec then the depth sync point will be updated again and again. So if when the trace didn't hit anything the depth sync point will be our final looping point. So if I draw this draw debug sphere over here you guys can now see this will find the depth of the obstacle so the ending point will be the final depth of our this is the landing this is the this is the result that we feed into our motion warping component so this is the depth sync point and if the trace didn't hit anything then we use a simple line trace by channel I'm gonna use a trace start from my second loop and add get actor duration for our vector multiply copy these nodes paste it over here multiply this my float with my 10 units something like this will be the landing spot for my motion warping component i'm gonna feed this over here start the end will be my i'm gonna subtract this under units set it over here set the debug to for duration and hit play mm, this is not working I'm gonna set this to for duration to none. Set this auto also to none. And now if I hit play, the traces are working properly fine. So now I'm gonna go to my character blueprint again. So if our trace does hit something, break the hit result, grab my location and promote this to a variable. This will be the landing spot. And now I'm gonna break my loop over here. I'm gonna create a custom event. I'm gonna call this break second loop. Break this loop over here. And call the break second loop. So these are the, this is the functionality. Now if I If I go to over here, after completion, the after the loop is completed, I'm gonna use a draw draw debug sphere. So after the loop is completed, I'm gonna use a draw debug sphere three times and debug our start sync point 
depth sink point and also the landing spot so this will show you the result so here you guys can now see my landing spot is not working i'm gonna go to my character and instead of 100 i'm gonna set this to line trace to 1000 or something like according to your need i'm gonna hit compile and play so this will be the landing spot the landing spot is not incorrect not is in the right spot so i'm gonna go to my motion character and multiply the forward vector to 50 units and then play again multiply these to 120 and here you guys can now see my three points are properly working fine so i'm gonna set this to low So the red will be our start start point and the yellow is also yellow will be the depth the looping point and the green will be the landing point so now i'm gonna use these three points to feed in my motion warping component so now we will set up the motion warping component and feed these three points into our motion warping component i'm gonna add a motion warping component in my character blueprint class and create a new custom event i'm gonna call this execute motion warping like so so first thing i'm gonna use is get my character movement component and set the movement mode to flying and then I'm gonna grab my motion warping component and use add or update sync point the first sync point will be our start motion warp I'm gonna copy the name paste it over here and you here is my make motion warping sync point node i'm gonna grab use the location and rotation for my location i'm gonna use the start sync point location and for the rotation i'm gonna use the get actor rotation feed this over here duplicate the same node and the second will be our loop motion warp copy the name paste it over here and the location will be my depth sync point rotation is also get actor rotation add a third sync point this will be my landing motion wrap copy the name and paste it over here the location will be my landing spot and the rotation is also my get actor rotation so this is my functionality for my motion wrapping component now I'm gonna use my play any montage node over here. 
after feeding the desired motion after feeding the desired locations to motion mapping component i'm gonna play my montage and after this on my completed i'm gonna set movement mode to walking set the target to motion mapping component so i'm gonna execute my event after displaying the draw debug sphere i'm gonna use a execute motion warping function so now if i hit compile save and go to my test map and play now you guys can see my character properly vault over the obstacles and if i change the landing spot to instead of 120 i'm gonna set this to 75 now my character lands near to the landing spot the landing spot is near to the obstacle so now with that functionality i can also vault over these kind of obstacles you guys can now see so this is it for this tutorial i hope you guys like this video and don't forget to subscribe the youtube channel for all the videos and more stuff and also you can support me on patreon and gain access to all the project files